Welcome to a quick unboxing video on rabbit hole reviews. Today we're going to take a look at a Vortex Spark AR Red Dot. So these have been around, I want to say, since about 2015 time period. So these are not new. In fact, they actually have uh, different models that have come out since this one. So they have a Spark AR Solar model, which costs more than this. And I think they have a Spark AR2, which, uh, don't quote me on that, but I think that has a couple of upgrades, like a, an LED, red dot. Uh, anyway, that's not really the subject of this video. What this is, is um, a red dot that comes in, usually you'll see it for about uh, $199, but if you are diligent enough and impatient enough, you can get these considerably less than that. So this one I picked up last week. I have several of these. Uh, and I wait until I find one that's on sale. So this one is a tan version. And the tan ones, for whatever reason, go for less money. Uh, I guess people don't like tan. They want their rifles all black. Anyway, the, the upshot of that is that this one costs 130 bucks. So for 130 bucks, this red dot is amazing. So... Without further ado, let's get into it. It's going to be kind of a short uh, review. It's, it's not really a review. It's more of an unboxing. Uh, I just thought I would take this out today because I'm getting ready to mount this on something. So we'll take a look inside and see what it comes with. So you open it up. Of course, you have your, your manual. Very nice manual. They include a, uh, a lens cloth, uh, laminated pages. Uh, everything's very straightforward. Uh, this ends up just being stuck in the box. Usually I kind of uh, there's not a whole lot to really learn about this uh, Everything is very straightforward So it's nice that uh, they include a battery So it, it's charged by a triple a so these are of course, you know common everywhere, you know Walmart what have you you can get these batteries Around the clock right so it's nice that they include that, uh, and we'll get into that in a minute to see where it mounts. So everything's wrapped up very nicely. A lot of superfluous plastic bags. Get that out of the way. So first thing we'll take a look at is the, the mount itself. So when you pick it up, the published weight on this, um, I have it at like uh, seven and a half ounces. We'll put that on the scale here in a second after we load up the battery to get the accurate weight. Um, these are just really nice. So it's this is like an FDE color, sort of. Um, and it's a, it's a rubberized coating, so it's very durable. Like I said, I've been running these since they came out. Um, what ends up happening is the more you get into firearms and the more firearms you have, of course, the more optics you need. And the problem with that is, you know, you scale it up and you start needing more and more optics. You don't necessarily want to drop Trigicon or A-point money on every single rifle or, or weapon system that you have. So what these really do, they fill a, a niche in a market where, is this a duty rated optic? Mm, I would take this over no red dot, I would tell you that. Um, I have other optics that I use for my primaries, but I would not feel um, uneasy about taking this into some real world situation. That's what I feel about it. Uh, now, I'm sure others will disagree. Uh, and they have other optics, right? They have higher end optics, as do I. So I understand where they're coming from. But I got to tell you, for 130 bucks, this cannot be beat. Uh, so if you notice, down below, they have the battery housing below inside the mount. So it makes it for a very unobtrusive system. So we'll take this battery cap off. If this battery cap is not captive. I wish they would put some sort of cheap lanyard on there. I don't know why a little bit of extra wire doesn't really cost that much money. Same with the uh, the turret caps. Uh, that's really something that they could probably do for not a whole lot more money. Um, it doesn't even have to be braided braided wire, right? It could just be some some plastic. Give me something. So we'll go ahead and load the battery, see if I can load this correctly. I'll know in about 10 seconds. So the battery cap is not captive, but that's not really a big deal. Just make sure it's tight. These are waterproof. Um, I got to see to what depth. 
Let's see if this thing turns on. If not, I put the battery in wrong. Nope, there we go. So it's gonna be very hard to pick this up on camera. Um, it doesn't look nearly this bad uh, in person. Uh, it's a two MOA dot. It's pretty clear. Now you're gonna have some of that uh, toilet paper tube effect. Obviously, it's a it's a it's a red dot. Um, it's not like an EOTech that has a projection or anything like that. Um, and you can see, I guess, with the frame rate of the camera, you can see that there's flickering in the red dot on camera. At least I see it here. Uh, that's not uh, visible in real life. When I look at it in real life, I don't see any flickering of the dot. These are just, I just love these things. And I like it really because I paid 130 bucks for it. That just puts a smile on my face. Now, obviously I have a bias towards vortex optics. Um, I have a lot of different vortexes and I've had several of these over the years. And I think this is my third one that I have right now in inventory. And so what this comes with, we'll go ahead and shut this off for now. Um, what this comes with is it doesn't have flip up lens covers, but they give you these rubberized caps that you can put over top. Now, the way these are designed is that they fold into each other. Let's see if I can do this right. And then they remain captive like so, so they're out of the way. So you can see how one pancakes on top of the other and it stays in position. So one thing people don't like about this is that it's uh, one MOA adjustments. So it's pretty broad strokes as far as the adjustment goes. Um, most people kind of want one half or you know quarter MOA adjustments or one third. You're not gonna get quarter or one third MOA adjustments on $130 red dot, I don't think. Now I'm no optics expert, so feel free to tear me apart in the comments. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's gonna be pretty bold adjustments out of distance, you know, it's just like everything else. Uh, your accuracy depends on an excellent zero. So zeroed in at 25 meters or 50 meters or whatever your zero is. And uh, yeah, so, you know, one adjustment's gonna be one whole box, right? Uh, at certain distances. Um, the, the clarity of the lens is quite good. Um, I'm not going to really compare it to higher end optics. I don't really think that's fair. Um, but this thing, man, it's for 130 bucks. This thing is worth twice that easily. Um, and it's just, it's just a good setup. So the way they have it set up here, uh, without me rambling too much, we'll go ahead and set this aside. We'll put that on the scale actually, now that the battery's in and see what, what the weight is. I'm guessing the, the published weight is without a battery. And then you got to add whatever little bit of ounces for the AAA battery. Let's see if my scale is going to cooperate. I might have to get the scale out of here and get back to it later. Oh, here we go. Okay. So it actually comes in at less than the published weight. 7.33 ounces with a AAA battery installed. So less than the seven and a half ounce published weight on their website. Not bad. I mean, it's, it's, it's heavy, I guess, but it's a solidly built optic. So in exchange for the little bit of extra weight you get, there's definitely some mass to it. Um, this thing is, is pretty tough. I'm not going to lie. Um, some improvements that I'd like to see. I don't know. These little captive covers, a lot of people cut these off because they don't like them. Uh, I leave mine on because I always like to have the option to put them on later. Maybe they can put some cheap flip-ups uh, on there, some clear flip-ups. Um, that would be my suggestion. And maybe get some cheap wire to uh, make these uh, turret caps captive and uh, the battery cover captive especially. You lose that battery cover. If anyone knows anything about who uses night vision, uh, you lose that battery cover, you're out of business, right? So that they should definitely make captive. Maybe not so much the turret caps. So if you look at the top of this cap here, it's got a little um, flathead screwdriver indentation, and that fits right into this, if you notice. So you already have a tool, a side adjustment tool, to adjust your winded elevation. So that's nice. So I guess if they had made those captives, you wouldn't be able to really use that, uh, turn around and use that sight tool, or that cap as a sight tool. But uh, that's neither here nor there. 
And let's see what else we got. Let's take a look in the box, and then we'll take a look at what this rifle or what this optic looks like with the on top of a rifle. Because I actually brought a rifle down here to take a look. So in the box, you get a um, a T10 Torx wrench. So that's always nice. That will allow you to install the mounts, which I don't have the mounting plate on there yet. So let's see what else we got. So we've got a Torx wrench. You've got your different screws, double bagged, which is nice. And you've got two different mounting options here. So you have an absolute uh, co-witness, and then you have a one-third co-witness riser plate, which you can install. I generally use mine at absolute co-witness, that's just what I'm used to. But it's nice that they gave you the option for both. So you can add a plate, if you see here, See if I can get this out of the bag and get it in frame. Here you see the uh, the mounting system. There's the T10 Torx wrench, uh, the, the screw. Basic Picatinny uh, mount. It's very strong. You're not going to get anything like QD for this price range, uh, which is fine. Uh, as long as you have a T10 Torx wrench handy, you should be okay. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell as far as what accessories you get. Everything is well packaged, bagged up. Um, you know, I don't know what the profit margins are on something like this. You know, if I can get these on sale for 130 bucks, I, I wonder what the unit cost is and, and how much money they're making. Um, it's hard to tell. But over the years, I've had, let's see, I have three of these now, and I've probably had a five of these total since 2015. So that's... Um, that's a data point of one uh, as far as how much I like these optics that I keep going back and buying them. Uh, and they're inexpensive enough that a lot of times I'll, I'll sell off a gun to somebody and I'll just include the optic to sweeten the deal because, you know, if I paid 130 bucks for it, uh, you know, they already come out of the box ready to go. They have a, a red dot. And uh, this, um, I mean, two MOA dot, right? And it's also night vision compatible, I think, on the lower two settings. So this is night vision compatible. So what's not to like for 130 bucks? Um, much less expensive and lighter weight than something like an Aimpoint Pro. I have those, and I love my Aimpoints. And, uh, you know, I'm an Aimpoint uh, fanatic, I would say. Um, Aimpoint, Trigicon, EOTech, all those, the bigger ones, I like all those. But sometimes I'll put something like this on a rifle that's not my main, main duty weapon or something that I wouldn't take out of the safe first. Um, just overall, very good battery life, uh, which, you know, I don't want to leave out an uh, unboxing and not talk about uh, battery life. So they're saying it's 50,000 hours, which is excellent. I mean, 50,000 hours, guys, right? On a readily available battery that you can get anywhere, and they're inexpensive. Now, I don't know if this one is, uh, I don't know if you can get a higher battery life rating with uh, lithiums. But, uh, you know, if you guys know more about this optic than I do, feel free to, to chime in. Some other specs on it, it's got a 22mm objective. Obviously, it's a 1X. Um, red dot, um, not a green dot, but a red dot. And uh, it's just, uh, without really getting too deep into it, uh, it's parallax-free. Um, it has, uh, of course, the MOA we talked about was 1MOA. It has 90 MOA of uh, elevation adjustment and 90 MOA of windage adjustment. And um, it's 2.5 inches or 2.9 inches long. Uh, as you saw, the weight came in at 7.33 ounces with a battery. Um, just keep in mind, guys, this was on sale for 130 bucks. When you look at it through that lens, no pun intended, um, that really changes things in my, in my mind. Um, you know, if you have... Let's say you have 20 or 30 AR-15s that need that you want red dots on, right? Are you going to buy an aim point for every one of those? I mean, maybe if you want to loot your son's college fund, you know. Not that I have a son or a college fund, but if I did, that's what I'd have to do. So there you see that flickering in screen. That's not actually present in real life. I guess the frame rate of this camera is lining up with the, the red dot. Uh, I'm no optics expert by any means, but let's put my hand behind there. This is kind of just an off-the-cuff unboxing, guys. Not a whole lot of uh, research has been done to this or for this video. But uh, we're going to keep this one short. 
Um, before I go, I'm going to pull up an AR and it shows you uh, what it looks like on the, the top of the rail at uh, absolute co-witness heights. So let's go ahead and shut this thing down. We're already running over 15 minutes. I thought I was going to be under 10. So this is what happens when you ramble. Most of you guys usually tune up by the second or third minute. So forever, whoever's here still sitting and watching this, you know, you have my respect. So let's pull up an AR-15 with a Spark AR red dot on it. So here you see one in black, um, how it looks. Uh, very straightforward. Um, for anyone who's asking or wondering, um, let's go over the AR itself. See if I can pan out a little bit. So there we go. This is actually one of my home builds. What you're looking at is a uh, 14 and a half inch pin and weld Colt SOCOM uh, profile barrel. Obviously, fixed front sight post. You have a Midwest Industries 7 inch quad rail. I love quad rails. You've got a Streamlight ProTac light. Mounted directly to it with a pressure pad. Receiver set is an arrow precision upper and lower. Um, it's got, a, I believe, a tool craft bolt carrier group. Your arrow precision flip up uh, rear sight. A standard, this one I think is a BCM charging handle. I'd have to go look. Um, basic no frills AR. It's got a um, BCM trigger in it. Uh, H2 buffer, uh, Magpul SL uh, handguard or a correction buttstock with one of their rubber extension pieces. I like these. These are very HK-like. Just gives you an added extra level of uh, shock absorption when you drop that weapon on its buttstock. Um, I like those. That's just one of my things. So yeah, this is your basic AR-15 that it fills on. So, the, you know, we're not putting these on Gucci weapons. Uh, I will say that this rifle shoots really, really well. Um, it's perfect setup for me. Uh, and you can, you know, crank these out. You know, I made these almost like on an assembly line at one point. I've got a Colt side swivel. These are kind of pricey. Uh, they're out there, but they're like 50 bucks, guys. So you really don't need these. This is just something I like, uh, something I'm used to. Anyway, let's get this out of frame real quick. I could probably do reviews on things like the Streamlight too, but uh, so to wrap it up, this is what you get. Now, they're usually, the, the, the tan ones are cheaper. If you don't care about the color, I would say go with the tan. Obviously it's identical in every way except for the color. It's not gonna match uh, whatever weapon you have, but who cares, right? That really doesn't matter. Um, like I said, I got this one because with some coupons and some other deals, it was like $137 out the door with shipping and everything. So when you look at it in that light, it, these are amazing optics, right? So don't, don't get it twisted. These are not aim points. These are not, you know, higher end optics, but they do get the job done. I shoot out to three, 400 yards with this. Um, it's not a, it's not an issue. Um, so that's all I really have. I kind of went a little bit long on this one. We want to keep this under 20 minutes. This has just been a quick unboxing. And a quick look at a Vortex Spark AR red dot. Now keep in mind, this was obviously marketed for the AR, right? Hence the name AR. But you can put this on any weapon system if you want to have absolute code witness. You can put this on an AUG. You can put it on, a, um, on an X95. You can put it on any kind of rifle or any kind of weapon system, really, that if you want an absolute code witness. You can put this on a shotgun if you wanted, really. It all depends on whether the height lines up and, the, and that's what you're looking for. So yes, this was marketed uh, for an AR-15, but it can be used for other things. So that's all I've got for this quick unboxing. This has been a quick look at the Vortex Spark AR 2MOA Red Dot.